The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. This is E.G. Marshall. The doors of the mind can be opened into corridors of unlimited possibilities, where time and place have a way of melding into strange and provocative patterns. Most ghost stories take place in the dark of night, or when shadows are long, and the moon is crossed by clouds. But we're about to meet a ghost at high noon. On a blistering hot day without a shadow in the sky. In the course of our story, the two women who are embarked upon a fateful journey find respite from the merciless sun when they are drawn toward a barn from which comes a very human sound. So dank and musty. What a place for a baby. The sound comes from... from there. No, no, the sound comes from over here. We're here. The sound is right here. Yes, and this is a crib. But, but Marion, I know. I know there's no baby in it. Our mystery drama, Ghost at High Noon, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elizabeth Pennell and stars Celeste Holm. It is sponsored in part by New Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up and Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. story begins on a long, straight ribbon of highway in an arid section of the western United States. Marion Jeffries and Janet Marston are longtime friends who are returning home after having driven Marion's son to a summer camp. What a lonely stretch of road. I don't like it. Oh, come on, Marion. No road is lonely at 10 o'clock in the morning. This one is. George was right when he said we should make this part of the trip either very early or late at night. Well, neither of us ever gets up at dawn. (laughs) And I don't think two women should travel the highways after dark. Oh, I don't mind driving at night. Well, then why didn't you say so yesterday? That motel we stayed in was certainly no prize. Well, not so bad. Anything to get away from Homer for a few days. Mm, Not from my point of view. Well, you can travel anywhere you want to at any time. Sometimes I do it only to keep from being bored. Nonsense. You don't know what being bored is like. I... I wanted to make this trip last longer. Really, Janet, it's an adventure for me. Well, I've enjoyed it, too. It's given us a chance to catch up. But I must say, this stretch of highway is deadly dull. Well, I wouldn't mind if it weren't so beastly hot. There's not a car in sight. Marion, I have an uncomfortable feeling that there are things ahead of us on the road. Oh, I'm glad you're not driving. But don't you see those wavy lines? Shapes rising up, coming closer, and then fading away? Sure. Heat haze. And over there. Look. Look. Nothing but bare, dry land. And sagebrush. I swear I see buffalo. And Indians. <laughs> <laughs> this terrible August heat has gone to your head. But I admit I'll be glad when we get to the next... Uh, uh-oh. What's the matter? We're losing speed. The, the accelerator isn't working. Oh, please, let's not have a breakdown way out here. Motor's dead. But we're miles and miles from anywhere. I know. Well, let's do something. We can't just sit here. I'm just running the battery down. Then we'll be in a worse mess. 
Are you absolutely sure we have gas? Well, of course I am. Look at the gauge. And you remember when we got it. I'll, I'll look under the hood. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Well, if you know what you're looking for. Good Lord, feel that blast of hot air. You'd better get back in while I check the manual. It's here, somewhere in the glove compartment. Marion, it must be 110 out here. Ouch! What's the matter? The hood. It's so hot I can't touch it. Well, get back in the car while the air conditioning lasts. We just better let the motor cool off. Cool off? In this blazing sun? Hurry, close the door. So now what do we do? I feel so helpless not knowing about what makes a car run or stop running. George always says, oh, skip it. I'm going to study this manual and see what happens when a motor's overheated. Maybe if I put on these gloves. Gloves in this weather? Well, then I could open the hood and look for a, a loose wire you or something. stay here. We'll think of something. I'm thinking very hard. No barn, no tree. Marion, what if we really are? Take it easy, uh, Janet. I said this trip is an adventure, so let's make the most of it. Then I suggest that we get out and start walking. Absolutely not. The best thing we can do is sit quietly here in the car. That's not my idea of an adventure. Someone's bound to come along. Janet? What? Look. Look over there. Is your window closed tight? Make sure. It's a dust storm heading straight for us. That's not a storm. It's, it's someone coming. But there's no road out there. Nevertheless, someone is coming. Well, they must be choking with dust. It's almost too thick to see us. We'll flag them. We'll flag them down. I'll get out and wave this scarf. Only, well, fantastic. It's, it's horses. But Janet... Janet, this is unbelievable. Look at what they're pulling. It's a mirage. It must be a mirage. No, no, they're real. Marion, you said I was suffering from heat. Not hate. this time. You do see what I see, don't you? A covered wagon. And a man who looks at least 150 years old. Hey! Hey! Morning, ladies. Good morning. Who who are you? I'm usually called Old Tyler. But my name is George. Well, that's my husband's name. I do not have the pleasure of knowing your husband, Miss Jeffries. Well, how do you know me? I have come to take you and Miss Marston to the village. He knows my name, too. Of course, I know your names. And now, if you will both come... You will fix the car for us, won't you? Oh, I have no idea whatsoever how you prepare these remarkable new conveyances. But you knew we were here. You... You must have come to help us. Oh, yes. I, I am here to be of service. Come along, ladies. Mirado is expecting you. Mirado? Mirado is the town beyond the hill. What hill? Over that way. Well, it's perfectly flat. You'll see the hill when we get to it. But a hill can't... Please, ladies, step into my wagon. But we don't want to step into your wagon. Uh, we would like to be on our way. This is your way. I don't think you understand. We're going in this direction, straight ahead. Unless there's somewhere we can wait until help arrives. I have to get home. I mean, my husband's expecting me. Mr. Jeffries does not know what day this is. Well, we know what day it is, and both of us have to get back. We live quite a ways from here, but perhaps if I could call my husband... Oh, he would never hear you if you called from here, Miss Jeffries. Marion, I think this man is... <laughs> Quite right in the head. We don't want to bother you, Mr. Oldtimer. Uh, what we really want is just to be on our way in my automobile. Ladies, your automobile will never take you to where we're going. But we're not going anywhere with you. Mr. Oldtimer, I think it would be best if you'd be good enough to go back to your town and ask a mechanic. A uh, mechanic? You know, a, a garage man. Someone who can fix an automobile. Why, no one in Mirado knows anything about automobiles. Marion, what are we going to do? I don't know. But if there is a town, as he says, I can't My believe... My orders they don't... are to take you to Mirado. What do you mean, your orders? Why, you have come to help us just as I'm here to help you. Well, then help us, will you please? Aye, that's better. Come along. You cannot sit here in the sun. Well, he's right, Marion. 
And I'm getting terribly thirsty. At least we could get some water and, and find a telephone. A telephone? Don't tell me your town is that primitive. I've never been privileged to see a telephone. But you will send someone for help. I will take you to Murado. That is all I can do. Wagon. It's not nearly as uncomfortable as I thought it would be. That's your idea. At least the countryside is changing. It sort of lulls you. Why, look, Marion, there is a hill, and we're climbing. But the horses seem so tired and old. I mean, you think we're going to make it? We're almost there, down in the valley. That's Murado. Incredible. And Janet, look. There are houses. Houses. That means there must be water. We have a fine village pump. And people, and people who can help us. But this this town is not on the map. I've studied the map very carefully. It shows nothing. Look down there, Miss Marston. See for yourself. Not very big, is it? But you must have a restaurant. We have a tavern and a church and a jail. What's the population? Well, that depends. Get along there, Jezebel. The street, Janet. Janet, where are the people? It looks... It looks deserted. No one round at this time of day. Why, Janet, it's a ghost town. Yes, you could call it that. But surely you don't live here alone. Oh, no, indeed. Now, will you please take us... Oh, the whole... If you'll step down, ladies, you can get yourselves a drink at the town pump. I can hardly wait. Oh, this rusty old cup. But I'm thirsty enough to drink from anything. Mm, I'd like to put my head under it. Feels wonderful on hands and arms. But it tastes... So, oh, so brackish. Hasn't been used in a long time. Now, where can we go for help? I will show you the points of interest. No sightseeing right now, please. But thank you. Do you have a, a telegraph office? Oh, no, indeed, Miss Jeffries. Scouts used to take our messages. Although there is now no reason to send a message. No reason? Tell us right now how to find someone who will go to the next town. Ladies, you are going to stay in Murado. Well, I suppose we're going to have to for an hour or two. You have come home, Miss Jeffrey. Oh, stop making jokes, Mr. Oldtimer. Murado's a place where people stay forever. Stay? In this deserted place? We'll soon see about that. Let's go to the mayor or to the police chief or someone, anyone in charge. You won't find them now. Not a soul till a stroke of noon. Why not? Someone must live in these houses. Where are the people? Asleep, Miss Marston. They're sound asleep. That store over there. Surely inside we'll find someone. No one there yet, Miss Jeffries. Well, I'm going to look anyway. Will you come with me, Marion? Yes, but it's all so quiet and eerie. Not a sound. Boy, oh, you'll hear sound, all right. In the barn, cross road, out in that field. What sort of sound? Find out for yourself. <laughs> You're not being very helpful. I don't like this place. Mr. Oldtimer, you have some explaining to do. You said we were expected. You are, dear ladies, you are. Who are you? How did you know our names? It was destined that you were the ones to be chosen this time. What are you talking about, please, Mr. Oldtimer? Chosen for what? On the hottest day of the year, when the heat haze spreads across the desert, Mirado comes back to life and claims two people from the modern world. There may be no new thing under the sun, but a frightening prospect confronts Marion and Janet if Mirado really has a living past. It is possible that George is merely a foolish old man touched in the head by too much heat. 
but on the eerie streets of a ghost town, you never know what sinister forces may be at work. The two distraught ladies seem to be getting further away from help with each passing moment. We'll return to them and the old-timer shortly with Act Two. Stranded on a lonely stretch of road when their car broke down, Marion Jeffries and Janet Marston have been taken to the strange ghost town of Mirado. In vain, they have tried to persuade their ancient escort to help them get back to civilization. But he has an unsettling way of insisting that they have come home to Mirado and that here they will stay. Their panic is growing with each new turn of events. Aside from the old man, there is no sign of life on the narrow streets. And so you see, dear ladies, we are happy to welcome you. We? You keep saying we. Where are the others? Later, Miss Marston. You'll meet them later. We really can't stay very long. Miss Jeffries, I'll show you to your quarters. My quarters? Truly, we are not planning to be here long. Come with me, both of you. We need you, Miss Jeffries, in the tavern here. Come, we'll go inside. Oh, I don't want to go in there. Oh, nothing to be afraid of. Come along. Janet, the pewter plate. Look. Look. And the glassware. Oh, my, I'd like to take these home. Maybe we are in luck after all. Marion, I didn't touch it. Honestly, I didn't. I just put my hand toward that goblet, and and it shattered. I... Follow me, ladies. The kitchen here is equipped in the best possible way. Why, it's covered with dust. That wood stove hasn't been touched for years. I think you will find that it will soon be ready for use. But who's going to use it? It's not for you, Miss Marston. <laughs> We have other plans, uh, but we understand that Miss Jeffries is a very good cook. Well, what are you talking about? This stove is for you, Miss Jeffries. <laughs> well, Marion, your reputation has really gotten around. Me? Cook on that? Oh, I believe you'll get used to it. Well, who, pray tell, is there to cook for? You'll meet them all. At high noon. Marion, we have to get out of here. Oh, yes, Miss Marston. I'll show you to the place we have for you. For me? I'm leaving. We're both leaving. We have real need of a school teacher. And what makes you think that I know anything about teaching school? We know a great many things about both of you. But I haven't taught school we for... We know that you like teaching school. And this is a fine opportunity. Stop it. I won't listen to any more. You said... Janet. Janet, I hear something. A voice from the barn. A voice? Oh, please make it a human voice. I'll be back at high noon, ladies. The bell on the church steeple will strike the hour. And then, at one o'clock, it will all be over. Janet. I'm terrified. He's a man, man. Listen. Oh, I hear it. Hurry. There's someone in that barn. It's a welcome sound with a crying baby. There must be a woman nearby. Help me. Help me to open the door. Stop. Well, we've got to open it. I think it's starting to... This door hasn't been opened in years. Well, how could it pull harder? Oh, there. So dank and musty. Oh, 
What a place for a baby. The sound comes from over there. No. No, the sound comes from over here. Right here. The sound is right here. In the corner. Look. Look in the corner. I don't see anything. It's so dark. A crib. Oh, what a lovely hand-carved crib. You're right. This is a crib. But Natalie is... I know. I know. There's no baby in it. Marion, tell me you hear what I hear. A baby crying right here in this crib. But there is no baby. Are we losing our minds? Oh, Janet, be sensible. We both hear it. Well, there must be an explanation. Oh, I can't stand it. That spooky boy. Let's get out. Oh, we can't walk out on a crying baby. You look on that side, I'll go over here. But Marion, I'm frightened. I always was afraid of the dark. Janet, Janet, we've got to keep our heads. That baby must be here somewhere. It's weird. There's no sense to any of this. Now, come on. There must be something about the acoustics of this old barn. You... The crying has stopped. Oh, Marion, I'm scared to death. Listen to that bell. kept telling you about something happening at 12 o'clock. Let's get back to town. I tell you, I'm afraid. Well, you're the one who doesn't like the dark. We can't stay in here. But the baby that was crying. But there's no crying now. There must be a reason. Come on, we've got to find out. Look, Marion. Out on the road to town. People. Thank heaven. Those two men in the field. Let's go talk to them. Oh, oh. They... They aren't moving. They look like statues. Or that painting. Yes. It's the Angela. And that girl who's running. Only she isn't running. She's standing still. Twelve. Twelve must be the magic number. That girl is moving now and she's coming this way. Little girl. Little girl. Can you tell her stop? Please stop. We want to ask you. She didn't hear us. She didn't even see us. Well, those two men. Let's let's talk to them. Sir, would you tell us, please? Please, we don't want you to stop your work, but we do need your help. I mean, can... Where's it? No use. They can't see us or hear us. This is impossible. They're here. Janet, you do see what I see, don't you? A man with a spade and a man with a hoe. Exactly. So I'm going to find out the way they're behaving. This can't be true. It can't be real. Nonsense. They're... They're ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Now, I'm going to make this man talk to me. Look out. You'll be hurt. That hoe is sharp. This man is real. His hoe is real. Marion, don't go any closer. I'm going to touch you. No. Marion, no. You can't grab his arm. Mister. Mister, you have to listen to me. He stopped breathing. I'm not sure he ever was breathing. But he's standing there. His eyes. Look at his eyes. Let go of him. Can't be. It can't be. He's going right back to work again. What about the other man? No use. It would be the same thing. We can try. No. Marion, I can see the look in his eyes, too. He's... He's dead. Just like the other one. Let's get away from here. Tony... Where can we go? Well, I'm coming around. I'm coming around to your point of view. We must be very calm and think this whole thing out very sensibly. Let's move as far as possible away from these robots. How about that hillside over there? Well, maybe if we sit down in the shade of a tree, we'll come to our senses. Peaceful here. But Janet, we can't stay here. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Maybe that old man was right. What do you mean? Perhaps you do belong in the kitchen. A terrible thing to say. Oh, I'm only kidding, Marion. But you were the one who wanted adventure. Enough is enough. 
today will last me a lifetime. That's what I mean. You're talking very strangely. I feel strange. I felt strange all day. Ever since seeing those buffalo. What buffalo? Back on the road. When we were in the car. It all seems like such a long time ago. Oh, Janet. The heat... The heat haze. It, it's gotten to you again. Perhaps we're still back in that car. No, we're here. In Mirado. And that is the strangest part of all. I agree that Mirado is a very unusual town. But now that it's 12 o'clock... If George was right, if we just go down to the center of things... Marion, do you really believe there is such a town as Murado? But, Janet, you can see it from here, just as clearly as I do. Listen. I've heard that sound before, when the old man came. No, but this is different. The way they're traveling, this must be young men. And they're heading down the main street. There, There must be someone who can help us. Ghosts. They're all of them ghosts. Damn it, snap out of it. Come on. Come on. Where are we going? Back into town. I don't think I can stand any more of these ghostly people. But the horses, Janet. Maybe we can get some horses and ride away from this frightening place. I haven't been on a horse in a thousand years. Neither have I, but we can try. Oh, Janet, we can try. They all look so dizzy. What did I tell you? Siesta time is over. Everyone's awake now. They're far from awake, Marion. The blacksmith shop's over there. And that should be the place to find out about the horses. Hello, ladies. How are you getting along? It's the old timer. Thank goodness, Mr. Old Timer. George, please, please, we can talk to you. At your service, ladies. You'd better be of more service than you were the last time. Well, I know it was you who brought us here, but we... You see, we simply don't understand. It's all very simple, Miss Jeffries. You heard the clock strike Yes, well, yes, we heard the clock, and we can see the people. I had my orders. Every single workout was in the hour. Good. Then you will take us back to civilization. Nothing of the sort. As I told you before, you're staying here. But we don't belong here. Those other people, they're... They're ghosts. I told you over and over again. You have been selected. But you said at 12 o'clock we would understand. And that everything would be all right. It is, dear ladies. It is. We need you, both of you, to go with the others. We'll pay you well, very well, for you to take us away from here. Anything you ask. I do only what I'm supposed to do for Mirado. There is no such place as Mirado. Right before your eyes, Miss Marston. As you said yourself, it's a very busy town. Oh, Janet, come on. We're going to the blacksmith shop. I wouldn't dare touch one of those horses. Oh, they look gentle enough to me. That gray one, please. I mean, are they real? Of course they're real. And that white-haired blacksmith. He's not like those other men. Look at those rosy cheeks. Most likely from all that heat. I must say the fire looks real enough. Excuse me. Um, please? Please stop for a moment. It's important. We we want to hire two horses. No use talking to old Sam. He's deaf and dumb. They are all deaf and dumb, every one of them. Lady, lady, you spend enough time in here. There's someone waiting for you. Well, why didn't you say that before? You've, you found someone who can help us? Come along. We're going back to the tavern. Well, that sign in front of the tavern is new. It wasn't there before. Hey, people have been working. Uh, right this way, ladies. Through the swinging door. And the door. It isn't rusty anymore. Someone's oiled the hinges. <laughs> the place is crowded. Joe! Oh, Joe! Welcome back, old-timer. Glad to see you. Did you bring her? Janet! Janet, he can talk! We found someone who can talk. Well, things are looking up. Or are they? 
At least there seems to be one other living soul in Morado. But why did Joe ask that question, did you bring her? Which one of the ladies does he mean? It doesn't sound as though he's going to help them get away. Marion and Janet may be in yet deeper trouble. And the mystery of this ghost town is far from solved. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. At the stroke of noon, the little town of Mirado seemed to burst into life. The streets are crowded now as people come out of their houses and go about what looks like normal everyday business. And there are workmen in the fields... But something is wrong. If you or I should try to speak to these people, would they answer? Our two frightened travelers had no one to turn to except the old-timer. But at last, they have heard the sound of another human voice. A man named Joe. I asked you, old-timer, did you bring her? I certainly did. She's right here. Marion. Which one of us is he talking about? Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe, is that your name? Did you explain to her that there is a great deal to be done? I tried. He didn't explain anything, Mr. Joe. You tell us. Oh, no use talking to him at this stage. He can't hear you. But he answered you. Why can't he talk to me? Not one o'clock yet. You're still in the other world. I'll make him talk. Your name is Joe. You run this tavern, and we need help. Old timer. Did you show her the kitchen? Marion, it's you he's talking about. We've got plenty of complaints today about the food. Look at all the customers. Yeah, looks like a full house. Did you show her where everything is? Try to, but so far, she doesn't seem to quite understand. Oh, she will. You tell her we'll take real good care of her. Nobody ever any more popular around this town than the cook. What'd you say her name is? Miss Jeffries. Jeffries. You stop talking about me like that and talk to me. You hear? Like I told you, Miss Jeffries, he cannot hear He's you. He's got to hear me. Now, please, please, Mr. Joe, you look like a sensible man. You can tell us what this is all about, please. Well, George, got to be going. Trouble in the kitchen. See here. He can't see you either, Miss Jeffries. Not yet. You tell that new cook she's very welcome. You're going to like working for Joe. He's a fine gentleman. Stop it! I can't stand anymore. Janet, that sad-faced woman in the corner. Let's ask no, her. No, I already tried. Just like the rest. That's Miss Crawford. Oh. Widow lady. You'll find her a very good friend when you get to know her. I want to know her right now. Right this minute. You must be patient, dear lady. Not now. Uh, we're on our way to the schoolhouse. We're here, everybody. Get ready. Oh, Chandler, what a darling one-room schoolhouse. No one-room schoolhouse was ever darling. Why, these children are charming. What do you think of them, Miss Marston? Well, they all look like normal, healthy children to me. Only I know they're not. Oh, I don't know from minute to minute what to believe anymore. You had better believe, Miss Barton. The children are doing this especially for you. They look as though they're singing. They are. <laughs> Very nicely, too. Well, then why can't I hear them? Why? In time. You'll hear them when you are their teacher. But I'm not going to be their teacher. Miss Marston, our teacher is old, as you can see. All the children have learned songs and games. I didn't think anyone still used those little bells. What are they going to do now? I think it's time for arithmetic. Oh, what a bright-looking little girl. The one going up to the blackboard. <laughs> yeah, you see? Seven times nine... Seven times nine does not equal 56. That's just what I mean, Miss Marston. But that teacher is nodding her head. This is outrageous. It's just as I told you. We need someone like you around here. Why, I'm going up to that blackboard and put her straight. Oh, no, Miss Marston. 
You can't do that yet. But I'm going to. Don't do it, Miss Marston. Children, children, this number on the blackboard is wrong. Here's the way it goes. Oh, dear, this chalk, the chalk won't write on the blackboard. Don't worry, Miss Marston. Here, young lady, you take the chalk and I'll show you the right answer. They've gone back to that game. Here, now I want to show you something. It's no use, Miss Marston. None of them can see you. Well, then why did you bring me here? So you'd know what to do later on. You keep saying that. We've been looking for someone like you for a long time, Miss Marston. And you've come to us at last. You will be there, teacher. You must be joking. Everything is a ghastly, hideous joke. That will be enough, children. It's time for us all to go. Marion... I have a feeling that the stage is being set for some tremendous catastrophe. The hour is approaching, and I must get to my station. Oh, Timer, oh, Timer, please don't leave us. George, George, you're our only hope. It's one o'clock. Hurry, hurry, run to the town hall. Marion, listen, listen. I heard the clock strike one, but the people, they're all talking now, all of them, and they can see us. Look, look, they're beckoning to us. Let's catch up. <laughs> it's dusty. The storm. The beginning of a terrible storm. Look, look over there. I told you. I told you. What did you tell me? This morning when I saw those buffalo and... <coughs> and the Indians. The town hall. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> a stinking piece of road. Come on. It's my favorite stretch of highway. <laughs> I'm glad it's not my Pete. Well, if you had the right car, you could do 200 miles an hour along here. Yeah, well, watch it, bud. A cop's supposed to set an example. Bet I can do 150. Shall we uh, try? No, no thanks. <laughs> you never make it in this thing. And we're supposed to be saving gas, remember? Ah, this road's only fun when you drive as fast as you can. Especially on a day like today. You know, Sweeney, sometimes I just feel sorry for the poor slobs we haul in for speeding on stretches like this. Yeah, right along here's the best place to get them. You, you actually come out here on purpose just to give them speeding tickets? <laughs> sometimes, when I have nothing better to do. <laughs> hey, 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 slow down, will you? Why, why? There's something up there on the road. Heat haze. No, 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 no. Come on now, Sweeney, slow down, will you? Hey, I think you're right. It's a stalled car, that's for sure. Yeah, rotten place to run out of gas. California plates. Nobody in it. Maybe they're sleeping. Well, we'll soon find out. Yeah, this is supposed to be your day off. But I'm still on duty, so here goes. No, 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 I'm coming too. Man, feel that heat. Nobody in the car, Sweeney. Oh, they'd be crazy if they were. I got the license number. If it's unlocked, there should be a registration. Find anything? Yep. Belongs to a Mr. George Jeffries, Vallejo Street, San Francisco. You want me to get that down? Okay. But where's Mr. Jeffries? Wait a minute. <laughs> Ladies' gloves in here. And a scarf. <laughs> Because he wasn't traveling alone. It looks like women's luggage on the back seat, too. Say, you don't suppose it was some dame who got stuck way out here all by herself, do you? No. No, it's my hunch that there were at least two people in this car. Hmm. But whoever they are, they took the ignition key. Air conditioning. That wouldn't work if the motor conked out. Yeah. Well, which, which way do you think they'd go? Wouldn't be stupid enough to walk on such a hot day. Well, we got a ride. But we didn't pass anybody coming this way. They must have gone straight ahead. Yeah. Could have been some time ago. But what do you think? Should we push the car off the road? Uh huh. Cars in plain sight. No traffic. And Midway's only about ten miles. We'll find a better. 
Maybe I should stay here. Oh, you're off. Well, I mean, rock. just just uh, in case, you look, know. Sorry, we don't have the patrol car. If we did. I checked with headquarters. I'll make my report, and if there's any trouble, you can come back with me. We'll bring the tow truck. Okay. I got it all down. Sedan, color blue. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Get in. Let's go. There's something in this book I want to check. What are you carrying that thing around with you for? Boy, what a rookie. Well, I haven't worked this territory as long as you have. Maybe they'll assign me to a car out here. Oh, just ask me anything. I just want to make sure that there isn't some other town or farm or someplace where those people could have gone. Oh, nothing but desert for miles in every direction. Well, let's just see. There's Baker. Razor. Hey, Sweeney, huh? listen to this, will you? Listen to what? Ever hear of a town called Mirado? Mirado? It's not around here. Well, it's a coast town, or at least it was. Old trading post. Uh, maybe a hundred years ago. No, longer than that. Well, then who cares about it today? I do. You know, you're really something. Well, just a minute. Can I read it to you? Read it, read it. Since I got nothing better to do, go on, go on, read it. It says here that uh, in August of 1846, a band of bloodthirsty Indians swooped into the little town of Mirado and killed all but one of its inhabitants. All but one? The lone survivor was a baby boy who was found asleep in a crib in a barn. There is a legend that once a year, the residents of Mirado come back to haunt the place. Now, what do you think of that? <laughs> I think it's poppycock, made up for the tourist trade. Hey, look over there, that great big spiral of smoke. Oh, Johnson, you're a fool. That's a dust storm, and it's coming our way. Come on, step on it. Anyone else drove as fast as I'm about to, even you would arrest him for speeding. Some people believe in predestination. And almost everyone, at some time in life, comes across a ghost. Our traveling ladies may have met with an unfortunate accident. Or perhaps they really were sojourners in time. Who found a better, or at least a different, place to fit into the scheme of things. The ghosts of times past are all around us, and legends persist. The present is made up of the past, and a clock of one century tells time in another. I'll be back shortly. Be grateful for the energy crisis this summer. It may keep you from driving along a deserted highway. Check your automobile and drive with care. There could be a ghost town waiting for you. Our cast included Celeste Holm, Francis Sternhagen, Nat Pullen, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. I've got some clues. I have those tire marks. They made a mold five years ago. And I've got this. This little button made of bone. It was clutched in Grover's hand. Take a look at it. I looked. It was a little button. The sleeve button. From a corduroy jacket. One of... Well... One of the host of buttons that adorned that jacket. The jacket I had worn that night. I never even noticed the one that was missing. That jacket. I still have it. I don't wear it often. But I still have it. It's in one of my closets. What you're saying is that if you can find the jacket it came from, you've got your killer. That's right. I've got it. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division... And Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater 
for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>